we're talking about agaricomycetes mushrooms, which essentially means wood-destroying mushrooms. Another term I use for these are polypores. So these are like your shelf bracket mushrooms that you'd see growing off the sides of living and dead trees. We are going to cover uh, some legitimate medical research. That being said, I am reading the work of other people. I am not a doctor myself. I make no claims or implications that any of my products can treat, fight, cure, prevent, diagnose any disease or ailment or illness. Uh, this is all just really good information that I think should be shared. The first thing I like to say uh, when I'm trying to open people's mind to the idea of using mushrooms to heal, just remember that not so long ago, one of the most revolutionary uh, pieces of modern medicine was derived from a fungus on accident, and that's called penicillin. So we all know that story. This fungus just grew in a Petri dish. It was all an accident. And I just think, you know, imagine if we started really studying these things on purpose. There's six mushrooms that I'd like to cover today, uh, namely chaga, Inonotus obliquus, uh, reishi, um, Ganoderma sugae, Ganoderma lucidum, lion's mane, Heresium arenaceus, uh, turkey tail, Tramides versicolor, and maitake, Graffola frondosa. The thing that's really unique about chaga is it's actually not a mushroom at all. It's become synonymous, chaga mushroom, but really it's a, it's a fungus. You're just getting like the mycelium, or technically it's an aerial sclerotia. I'm not even going to try and explain what that means, but chaga is extremely virulent. It is actually a parasite. So it is a parasite to live birch trees. It will kill the birch tree. It will decimate the birch tree. People that actually grow chaga on artificial substrates uh, like rice will uh, promote this myth that chaga has this wonderful, sustainable, uh, symbiotic relationship with the birch tree. And I think it's just because they need to use that to promote their product to say that people that are wild harvesting chaga is unsustainable. Uh, the truth is, it's, it's not, at least in the way that we are doing it. But the other truth is that if your chaga is not wild harvested, your chaga is not chaga at all. It is not real, it is not the same thing. So it takes that relationship where the chaga is actually draining you know, in extracting the life force of the tree for years, it hollows out the center of the tree and it stores um, all of the beneficial compounds, minerals, nutrients, etc. in this like rough textured, you know, piece of fungal armor that explodes out of the side of the tree. So chaga is really unique in that context. It only grows on live trees and chaga is really kind of an anomaly in just the power of its benefits because of that life cycle. One of the things that chaga's really rich in is melanin. Uh, melanin is great for your skin. Uh, more melanin in your skin essentially allows you to be more resistant to UV light. It is uh, promotes the growth of your nails and your hair because you have melanin in your hair and um, in your skin and in your nails but also in your eyes. Um, so that's really a beneficial thing to, to supplement your body with melanin because that's what makes the dark color of chaga. So somehow melanin is actually soluble when you make chaga tea, uh, which is really unique because that's something it's kind of bound to in the chaga that makes it that way. Whereas on its own, it wouldn't be soluble. So that's one thing that's really special about chaga, but chaga is also you know, in correlation with that melanin concentration, the most potent source of antioxidants on earth and phenolic compounds. Um, that means ex it's extremely anti-inflammatory. It's extremely beneficial for your immune system. Uh, but, you know, there is more research required. There are people that have uh, found that chaga may contain oxalates, which are not good for you. They cause kidney stones. So, um, anything in moderation, something like chaga is really special um, and should be treated 
as such, it might not be a good thing to be drinking three cups of chaga every single day. Some interesting history about chaga. The Conti people of Western Siberia were the first that we know of to use it. They found that chaga aided with digestion. That was 2,000 years ago. And then Tsar Vladimir Monomach attributed the disappearing of lip tumors to a, detoc a decoction of chaga mushroom in the 12th century. In the 16th century, Shen Nung Pen Sao Ching dubbed chaga the king of herbs. Then in 1950, the Moscow Medical Institute began conducting clinical trials on chaga mushroom. In 1955, chaga was recognized officially as a medical treatment in Russia. And then in 1968, the cancer ward uh, by a Russian novelist made the findings of chaga mushroom available to the Western world, it translated the research. So it makes sense that just like through the woodwork, people who have read this in America are slowly one by one talking about it. And all of a sudden we're here in 2020 and it's becoming a little bit more mainstream. I'll segue right into Rishi because it's growing right now. Um, and also it has a lot of history. Before the first century, um, Chinese healers from the Han dynasty were the first ones to discover that Rishi had healing properties. Um, in the first century, Rishi's medicinal values are documented within Shen Nong's herbal classics. In the third century, Rishi became a highly coveted commodity limited only to the Chinese nobility, and it remained that way for a very long time. In the 1960s, Rishi became a cultivated mushroom in China, which greatly expanded its global research. And in the 1960s to, you know, more modern day, uh, it started to be very heavily studied with a great amount of research pointing to its benefits. And then here we are in 2020, and people are just discovering that Rishi exists in America. And this is an interesting trend. You have it with Rishi, you have it with lion's mane, you have it with some other mushrooms. Uh, you have Ganoderma lucidum in China. We have Ganoderma suge here in America. I call them both Rishi. In America, people call it the you know varnish shelf or hemlock bracket. But really, we have this happening with uh, lion's mane and the bear's head. Um, that's Heresia marinaceus and Heresia americanum. And really, this is just ecological variance you know, continental drift and all that. You just have variants in each hemisphere. What I've been fascinated with is the wild American mushrooms that people have not known about because these things date back thousands of years in the other hemisphere. But we've really lost knowledge about how these things were used in America. And it's an absolute idiotic thing to believe that they weren't used by Native Americans. Anyway, I'd like to get into some of the specific benefits with, with Rishi. Um, Rishi has three core benefits that I think are noteworthy. Stress relief, immune system support, and cardiovascular health. So I'll start with the stress relief. It's classified as an adaptogen. Well, adaptogens help the body maintain homeostasis by stabilizing physiological properties related to stress. Adaptogens support neurological, endocrine, and immune systems and allow a more positive physical response to stress. Uh, it contains three major immunomodulating substances, triterpenoids, proteins, and polysaccharides like beta-D-glucans. So a 2002 study states that these increase mitogenicity, which is cell reproduction, and activation of immune cells thus supporting an effective immune response and contributing to its anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer properties. Um, a 2018 study also related immunomodulatory activity of Rishi to potent anti-cancer properties due to its ability to regulate the expression levels of immune cytokines in blood serum. And, you know, that's kind of a talking point in antiviral research right now and the cytokine storm that uh, is exhibited in coronavirus um, in your lungs. Um, and I say that's related, you know, that's all I'm saying. A 2002 study found that several polysaccharides 
among them beta D glucans, uh, gylans isolated from Ganoderma lucidum, also exhibited immunostimulating activity. The isolated compounds increased proliferation of lymphocytes in vitro, so that it means rapidly increasing the number of white blood cells. So that's a little bit about Rishi. One other thing about Rishi that's really cool is that it can uh, help reduce allergies. Rishi has been shown to regulate the release of histamines, which is directly associated with allergies. Let's get into lion's mane. There's going to be more to learn about each of these things than I'm able to cover in the time that we have, but let's talk about lion's mane's kind of characteristic. It's very much known as a nootropic or something that is awesome for your brain. So one of the benefits of lion's mane is actually memory retention. Heresia marinaceus has earned its spot as one of the most impressive medicinal mushrooms due to its nootropic abilities. Uh, they've been thoroughly studied and demonstrated by professionals. A 2017 study showed that mice who were fed lion's mane supplements, and those were like water extracts, exhibited significant increase in spatial awareness and short-term and recognition memory. Uh, researchers concluded that it induces a boost effect on neuronal functions. These brain-boosting effects have also been examined for the treatment of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's and dementia. In a 2011 study, treatment with lion's mane prevented impairment in mice afflicted with amyloid beta peptides, which are a cause of Alzheimer's. Um, you know, on this same wavelength, nerve growth and regeneration of nerve cells is another trademark of lion's mane. Nerve growth factor, NGF, is essential in maintaining and organizing neurons in the central nervous system, as well as modulating neurogenesis and memory. Uh, Heresiones and erinacins isolated from lion's mane have been found to stimulate NGF synthesis. In 2008, there was a study that showed that Heresium erinaceus extracts induced a five-fold increase in nerve growth factor in the expression of MGF in mRNAs in human astrocytoma cells compared to the control group. So really, this is just like an explosion of better health going on in your brain. There's been research that even shows it can help repair the myelin sheath on damaged nerve cells, and that's directly related to MS. Uh, multiple sclerosis, because that's what happens when your myelin is destroyed. Um, not only can it help prevent that, but it can actually help regenerate the myelin sheath, which is really fascinating. There's even been research uh, on lion's mane's use for test scores, where the you know people that were on lion's mane, their average test scores went up, and when they came off lion's mane, their test scores went back down. So. There's evidence that it can just, you know, and it makes sense given everything else that we've said, that it can actually make you smarter. Um, and that's what it did to the mice. So um, I think it's really a fascinating thing. It's also been researched for anxiety in women and depression. Um, and really, it's regarded as one of the uh, best supplements that women can be taking because of that, especially if you're depressed. Uh, I don't have the details of the study right here on hand but look it up look up the effects of lion's mane for women with depression and anxiety and it's really interesting turkey tail uh turkey tail is an important one to cover because this is the one that is actually undergoing a clinical trial that was approved by the fda so um it's most known for its anti-inflammatory and anti-cancer activity in 2012 the FDA approved a $5.4 million clinical trial studying the effects of turkey tail supplementation in conjunction with chemotherapy in people battling late-stage prostate cancer. The study was funded by the National Institutes of Health, and it's being conducted by researchers at Bastyr University. So how awesome is that? <laughs> you know, that's one of the most uh, exciting things to me. Uh, to see that this actually has promise in being embraced by the medical community. One thing that I want to talk about with turkey tail that's really just like probably the most significant component is uh, PSK, polysaccharide crestin. That's one of the active ingredients. 
in Japan, polysaccharide crestin extracted from turkey tail mushrooms is an approved drug and paid for by National Health Care to treat cancer along with standard chemotherapy and as an adjuvant therapy. In an adjuvant therapy, for those who don't know, it's a secondary, secondary form of treatment administered after primary cancer treatments to lower the risk that the cancer will return. So PSK has been rigorously researched in patients with breast cancer, colorectal cancer, gastric cancer, and lung cancer. Clinical trials have also shown that PSK treatment improves quality of life during chemotherapy and post-surgery, as well as extends five and 10 year survival rates. It's been shown to have antiviral, cholesterol regulating, and immunomodulatory effects. I guess let's talk about my talkie. This is the last mushroom I'll cover. Um, it's commonly referred to as hen of the woods, not to be mistaken for chicken of the woods. Once again, this is why I like to use scientific names because it really adds a lot of clarity. You have two different mushrooms. One is chicken of the woods. One of them is hen of the woods. Um, so we're talking about Griffola frondosa, maitake, hen of the woods, also known as the dancing mushroom. Uh, that This is how many common names exist for some of these things. But uh, the name the dancing mushroom is kind of funny. It stems from the Japanese commoners who would dance for joy when they found maitake, knowing they would be greatly compensated for their discovery. So supposedly they like literally would, you know, dance for joy when they found it. Anyway, maitake is one mushroom that you can eat. It's actually a very nutritional, uh, nutritionally rich polypore mushroom. It contains a wealth of beneficial compounds like beta-glucans, antioxidants, phytosterols, fiber, vitamins B and C, potassium, minerals, amino acid. Um, it's demonstrated to support the immune system, lower blood pressure and cholesterol levels. So uh, we'll just get into a little bit of that. Um, Maitake is a low calorie and high fiber food, so it can help you feel fuller and avoid overeating, but it actually does a lot more than quell your appetite. It can help with weight loss. Researchers have published studies investigating the impressive ability of maitake to lower blood pressure, uh, cholesterol levels, and improve metabolism. Specifically, maitake inhibits the accumulation of lipids in blood serum in the liver, so it effectively lowers your low-density lipid, LDL, cholesterol levels, and risk of associated cardiovascular diseases. And this might be in part due to the presence of the phytosterols in the mushroom, which are a naturally occurring compound that blocks your body from absorbing cholesterol. So that's really one thing that's unique about maitake, and it has been shown to be effective for weight loss. One in three adults suffers from high blood pressure, hypertension, and uh, in human and animal studies, maitake exhibits uh, cardiovascular benefits, including decreased blood pressure. A 2010 animal study concluded that maitake mushroom lessens age-related hypertension, and the same study found that regular maitake could induce inflammation and support increased longevity and the quality of life. Another animal study found that chronic uh, consumption, 8 to 10 week regular maitake consumption, led to decreased blood pressure. Just to conclude here, I'd love to just in two sentences um, kind of summarize the benefits of each mushroom. So if you're seeking energy, immunity, or skincare support, choose chaga. Chaga is extremely rich in antioxidants. Pick reishi if you'd like to relax. It has naturally calming properties. It's great for anxiety, your heart, and your lungs. If you're being slowed by brain fog, choose lion's mane. Lion's mane is a nootropic. It can increase awareness, memory, and cognitive function. Get turkey tail. If you suffer from pain or inflammation, turkey tail is the most clinically researched mushroom on earth. Try maitake if you're looking for a natural weight loss assistant or to boost your metabolism um, or help with cholesterol. And that's it.